It's your boy Zay Peter Zay I am. I am that I am, as you are that you are, for we are all that we are. From the individual to the many, for many is the all. From the all is one. So your boy's back. I'm back and up. It's been a little while since I've been here. But, uh, you know, sometimes you guys take a little time off for your self-care, your soul repair, soul retrieval, all that good stuff, right? So uh, that's basically what I had to do. So take a little hermit time and go within. But with current things being as they may, definitely spirit's been with me. I've been plugged into the energy as I always am. Um, and if you don't know, definitely be sure to check me out on Facebook um, or IG. You can catch me when I do lives, when we do live readings, channelings, healing sessions, energy work, all of that good stuff. Um, ZP the I am over there on Facebook. Uh, but beyond that, I haven't really gotten too much into dropping my regular videos. So I'm back now with a brand new one. And really, this is something that kind of heavy for the collective. I was hoping to really not even get into, um, but when spirit calls, spirit calls, and when things weigh in the chest and when things weigh in the heart, we're called to express that, express that light, express that thought, put that thought form out there for it to start to amalgamate with other thought forms and create and manifest. And this is how this collective, this co-creative, collaborative experience that we call life, our reality, comes to pass. But beyond that, uh, what I do want to talk about is politics. Now, for those who are not aware, here in the West, in the States, we are t going through a moment, a period of time where uh, elections are coming up. We've got the left wing versus the right wing, conservatives versus progressives, progressives, aka liberals, liberals becoming social justice warriors, uh, right wingers becoming nationalists, white nationalists, uh, separatists, segregationists. Um, we've got economists looking for, seeking for more economic di diversity. Uh, you know, we have big tech and privacy concerns and we have uh, all sorts of conspiracy th uh, theories and terroristic groups and conspiracy theory groups and QAnon, Antifa, uh, and not to mention the current state of the world that we're in, which is with COVID, with the lockdown, the loved ones are dying. We're losing a generation of people. And in that, many hearts are suffering, many people are angry, um, the media is manipulating and playing and weighing on our energies, um, continuing to push these narratives that incite us, that intoxicate us with just more intensity, more rage, more clickbait, hate-filled, uh, fear-monger, hate speech, garbage. All of this stuff that weighs in our collective energy, uh, creating more fear, creating more separation, more division amongst people. So now we come to a time in politics where, you know, the idea of these candidates being here, the left and the right, uh, are who's for one's own good and who should one vote for? Who's going to be one's representative? Who's going to be one's spokesperson? Who's going to really create and affect change for the collective in a way that's positive according to my belief systems, according to my thought of view on what's best for the collective? And so they give you two options because only two options are allowed, basically, and anything more is beyond the scope of what's possible, right? Or rather, they give you the illusion of two options because the fact of the matter is, is that as much as you feel that you're voting, the vote, the popular vote is pretty much a popularity contest. And it does not actually hold the weight. This is why we've had so many recent elections that were either, either stolen, stolen before the election taking place or stolen in the main election. We've got different parties pushing their specific agendas, pushing their specific candidates over the will of, the, of their constituents, over the will of the public. And not that any of it actually matters when, at the end of the day, the true votes that actually count are the Electoral College. In which case, if you know anything about the Electoral College, it would seem you would be more prudent if you wanted to place a vote. It is to lobby your freaking council members and your elected local officials who actually have a vote in the Electoral College. To put that pressure and make sure they're representing your interests, right? And make sure that they're actually going to put a vote in for the candidate that you actually are leaning towards. But they like to get us divided and get us distracted on, oh, the popular vote. Because that's something that matters, right? Because the popular vote, which represents the masses, isn't consistently, constantly, every time we have an election being tampered. Now they're straight up dumping, gar dumping mail sh out of the mail trucks on the way, en route. 
So, as we all hop on the left foot, jumping and following the bandwagon, what we're, we're all should vote. That's the narrative. We should vote. Many of those who's pushing to vote really have their agenda of who you should vote for. They won't outright say, go vote for Biden or go vote for Trump. They'll say, get out and vote. Vote or die. This and that. And then they push the agenda for who they really want. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, they make the public, they make you, they make me, they make all of us feel that we need to align ourselves with like brand loyalties, political brand loyalties. I'm in the Republicans, I'm in the Democrats, left wing versus right wing. Hey, dumbass, any air flying bird or object needs both wings to fly. The left and right are needed. The media got us pitted against each other as though the left or the right have to be dominant, have to be supreme. Hey, dumbass, if you have one completely outdoing the other, you're flying or swimming or whatever you're doing in circles. You're propelling yourself just by one aspect, thus spinning in circles. You get nowhere. At the end of the day, it's always about balance. This has always been a collective this has always been a co-creative experience. But beyond that, at the end, beyond that, when you dig deeper in the co-creation, there's the individual and then there's the external, the person, the other, right? There's the internal and then the external. So you got to deal with your own balance internally and, ex and the external will manifest through that, right? You got to balance your own male and female, your own masculine and feminine energies. You got to figure out what the fuck are your value systems, Perhaps you really do believe in certain laws and certain certain principles and values that the Republicans and the, the, the conservatives or whatever other label you want to place on them believe in. I can get down with uh, economic, uh, economic sovereignty and empowerment. I can get down with, you know, personal responsibility and being able to, you know, work for one's own good to be able to kind of create and manifest those things that one desires. I can get down with that. I can get down with uh, advocating and representing the particular rights and laws that have been established from Jump Street, you know, our basic early amendments, particularly with the first um, censorship, right? And then the, the second amendment, even the right to bear arms. I can get down with that. I'm not an NRA supporter, but I can completely understand because in these times and days, when the world around you gets seems like it's going crazy, you feel like you got to go crazy to keep up. But that's the side, besides the point. That's the world we're in. So this is why we're in this time. Oh, go vote. Because they make you feel like you have a say. You have uh, influence. But really what they ask you to do is just to co-sign. It's just to sign off and say, yes, whatever happens from here, I turn over my power to you. My own personal power to you. To sovereignty. You give up your sovereignty to allow them, the greater than, the one percenters, the hires up, the powers that be. To allow them to control your world as though you're not in control of your own life. Whether the left wing or the right wing wins the particular top office. So depending on what reality you, you live, yes, this election can come down to vote or die. It is so important because the next day, as soon as the election is over, as soon as that, that, uh, that official is uh, sworn into office, what happens? You wake up and the world keeps turning. But for now, let them pitch you against your family and your friends and your loved ones. Because this is so priority. The truth of the matter is, your power is always within. Yes, voting, you have the right to vote. And yes, if you can vote and you can vote for something you believe in, you should definitely do that. But whatever you believe in, you should be able to do that freely without judgment or in spite of judgment. For those who judge, oh, you should vote left or right. Oh, you need to vote conservative. Oh, you need to vote liberal. Oh, you need to vote for the lesser of two evils. Fuck, evil is evil. Why must I consign and conform to evil? If I take place in certain elections and you swap out candidates that were rightly supposed to be put into positions, why must I align myself with whomever you stick in the slot? Because you believe that these particular groups of people, the black people, going to automatically go to the Democrats? You hear condescending, you hear condescending undercover subliminal racists 
with their <laughs> with their policy that has destroyed communities for generations now. <laughs> we talk about 47 years of service, but then you talk about crime bills being passed in the 90s, people being labeled super predators, people going to jail, families broken up for years. I've had a sibling, older brother, thrown away, just locked away in jail for years. Time off of our relationship. Family splintered. People hurt behind us. To come back into power and, and act as though one is uh, a friend and one has learned a lesson and move forward and do nothing to rectify or make the situation right. And yet again, come back and just assume your vote is mine. Your support is mine. Because I am <laughs> what's best for you. As though anyone has the right to tell you what's best for you. Versus the other side, which has <laughs> pretty much a self-righteous, self-centered <laughs> wild card in the, in the seat. <laughs> Someone who is divisive across the board. And publicly so. There's no way to take this candidate in without having a visceral reaction. A disgust or support. I really like that. I cannot stand this person. And the, the media will hype you up into a frenzy into coming out of your own character. Wishing ill, wishing, I hope this person dies. This person is the worst person ever. I mean, well, while that may be true, this person has also, by chance, ton things that would be considered good. Things that go unspoken and it said, hey, this person's so horrible, yeah, he did, that person accidentally did this. And you can see this person is completely self-centered and is completely working in his own favor. But then you're still left with the choice of the lesser of two evils. Do you, do you go with the devil who's self-centered and really trying to put himself and his people over through whatever means and manipulations and machinations who's working for the aggrandizement of his own ego who wants to look good so who might do a couple good deeds just so that when they get out of office somebody might say something nice about them who might by happenstance cover something that is of a personal issue to you that you just and then who at the same time has the biggest blunders in the world that'll fuck over the entire world Meanwhile, the other party, who you might not overtly say has blunders uh, that fucks up the entire world, but subliminally has destroyed countless cultures. Evil versus evil. So whether one person decided to opt out completely of voting for this particular election, for any particular election, one should never feel like you are evil or unworthy for being different, for having a different opinion. Whatever you feel, whether you are left-wing or right-wing, whether you are Democrat or Republican, whether you <laughs> whether you are hot or cold, at the, end of this, at the end of this day, even as a nation, even as a society, there are going to always be differences. But more than anything, there's a collective. And there needs to be the ability to be free individually and move as a unit. And that starts with accepting and dropping the judgment, dealing with your own shit. Stop giving away your own power to the belief that these two random ass old white guys are going to be the su supreme beings in your life. No one is the supreme authority over your life other than you. Whether this one or that one comes or whether this one or that one puts this policy or that policy into place, at the end of the day, every day, it is you tucking yourself into bed. It is you waking up in the morning. It is you dealing with your issues and problems that come into your life. All issues and problems that come into your life to give you opportunity to define yourself. All instances, all moments created moments of celebration, moments of joy, all done unto you, by you, not by them. 
not by anyone else. And so as long as you allow yourself to believe that it is this person or that person or that your life is dependent on this particular election, that's as long as you allow yourself to be controlled and allow yourself to be at the whim and at the mercy of all of these extra things. Media fear mongering, political manipulations, psyops, psych attacks. This is when you start to fall victim and pray to, to conspiracy theories, to ideas of that create anxiety and depression, to projecting into negative future timelines, or to act, tapping, or to consistently tapping into old traumas and to re-traumatizing oneself because that is the way it's done. Like the Mandalorian, this is the way continue re-traumatizing, continue living back in the past, continue recreating our pains and our hurts, never evolving through them, or continue projecting forward and assuming further pains and hurts to come, never ever being present in the moment, never focused on making the moment right, and trusting the right moment right here, right now, to unfold into every future now moment. All of that is up to you. It has never been up to them. And so, this is an invitation for you to take up and own your own power. Inform yourself. Educate yourself. If you wish to vote, get to know who you want to vote for. Recognize that you're just participating in the popularity contest aspect of this. And that there's more you could do if you really cared enough to do so checking in with your representatives who's representing your specific locales and the electoral colleges right checking in for who who has what policies in place that might represent your actual interest as opposed to the media fear-mongering issues at hand as opposed to the demands of the the social justice warriors or antifa or uh this this the proud boys the the the, the, the kkks the, all of these subset subpar subliminal groups that actually have no true influence over you except for that that which you allow them take back your power starting with this election even if you chose not to vote even if you chose to do the most ridiculous thing like write in someone it is your choice People will often say, oh, when it comes to black people, oh, your ancestors, your ancestors died. Our ancestors died so we can vote. No, my ancestors died so we can be free. And being free includes the choice to not vote if I wish. Being free and choose the choice to not to say, no, I'm not going to align with any of this bullshit. Not until I get some candidates in there that actually reflect what I truly believe. And if not, then living my life forward without the fucking system, without the fucking systems, vote in the popularity contest. Because I know at the end of the day, none of that bullshit has power over me. The world might look like it's coming down all around us, especially when you're listening to external sources. But when you go outside day to day and you, and you see the world is still going, when you wake up in the morning, whether it's a good feeling or a bad feeling, you have that recollection that whatever has happened the day before, the world is still going, the world will continue to spin. And you will continue to wake up the next morning having to go on with your day and your life, whatever it may bring. So stop acting like it is these two candidates that are going to make it a good day for you or a bad day for you. Take back control of your life. Start here. Start now. Start with every choice you make. What do you choose to do? Who do you choose to be? How do you choose to be it? For whatever you choose, it is okay. You are worthy. Your choice is valid. And life goes on. And so that is all that I had on my chest and heart for the past 
wow. I wanted to put that out there before the election came. Um, you got a little bit of the I am coming in with along with my own personal conviction. So share it out if, it, if you felt it, if you connected. Be sure to check for your boy over on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash face, forward slash I am dot ZP. Hit your boy up on IG. Um, and it's all love. Peace and blessings, family. I'm out.